Good evening to all. We are here to speak about the Recovery and Resilience Fund, its role in the Greek economy and the development perspective of our country. Let me announce the discussions of this panel. We have with us Mr. Simos Anastasopoulos, President of the Council of Competitiveness of Greece, Mr. Nikos Vetas, who is Professor of, in the Athens University of Economics and Business and General Director of EOV, that is the Foundation for Economic and Industrial Research. And we'll also have Mr. Theodoros Kilakakis, who is the Alternate Minister of Finance for Fiscal Policy in the Ministry of Finance. We'll have Mr. Skilakakis in some minutes through internet. So we start the discussion with Mr. Anastasopoulos and Mr. Vetas, who are present here. Let me raise a joint question addressed to both of you. What does it mean for each of you, recovery and resilience fund, and especially through your experience and your own viewpoint? Mr. Anastasopoulos, you have the floor first. Good afternoon. Thank you for the invitation. I also thank the chamber for my presence here, and uh, I thank you for the question. I believe this fund is a major opportunity, both for Greek economy and Greek uh, business world at large. If we learn something during uh, the crisis before the pandemic, but also during the pandemic, is that uh, economies recover as quickly as the level of their competitiveness allows. And at this point, Greek economy was always ailing. Therefore, a major opportunity for Greek economy to retrieve part of its competitiveness, to become more competitive, to integrate the new paradigm to which we all believe, that is extrovert character innovation, and for Greek uh, companies to be transformed digitally through green energy and all those uh, pillars supported by the Resilience and Recovery Fund. Of course, for each Greek business, uh, it represents something different. A great part of the funds, especially subsidies, go straight to the public um, treasury and from there on will be diverted and allocated for infrastructure work. And the biggest part of the funds are directed towards the Greek company so as to secure the operation and change their mentality, viewpoint, vision and modus operandi. And there the big difficulties rise, the big part having to do with public infrastructure means that the public administration must be ready to deal with such a, a huge project that is more than doubling public investment and therefore the mechanism, the public mechanism must be able to operate effectively and efficiently, but also the way the new law will operate on contracts that is so as to implement all that quickly. And for Greek companies, I believe the main issue is first of all, get informed what this RRF means, what are the opportunities, what are the programs included, how it can operate, that the way it operates has changed and the overall mechanism, funding mechanism, the way banks approach this issue issue, the plans that have to be submitted so as to convince on sustainable development paradigm and how to make best use of this opportunity. Anyway, the opportunity, the opportunity is there, but a major difference must be affected vis-a-vis uh, -vis our mentality and uh, Greek entrepreneurship. Mr. Vetas, if someone were to ask you what is this RRF and especially what what will be the role the role of it in my life over the next years? Can it change it? What would you reply to this person? Well, listen, because uh, with uh, students, especially the young ones, we must be sincere, first and foremost, I would say the f four first thoughts uh, that would uh, arise before entering into a deeper analysis. And these thoughts uh, are both positive and negative. A first thought arising is that in a country which is in crisis for many years, since 2008 that is, the youngsters actually have not uh, met, uh, have not known the country outside of crisis. Therefore, this RRF is an opportunity to finance and I stress that to finance because we were cut off from capital markets after 2008 
it was a crisis of competitiveness, that's true, but we were cut off from capital markets. Even if you wanted to do certain things in public administration and and markets, nothing could be done since there was no funding. Therefore, it is a huge opportunity to improve the infrastructure of economy and we can't do anything without it, also having the resources to do so, something that we didn't have during the three previous programs. The three previous prog- programs, the, I mean the MOUs, the three MOUs, I mean, offered funds to do certain things, but due to the uncertainty prevailing, there would be no additional um, private funds, and there was a great austerity. So for one thing, RRF can offer a radically different picture than we had at the time. Second, that is positive, of course. A second thought coming in mind when I think of recovery fund and the euphoria generated in the country because of it, which, however, is negative. And since you told me to be sincere, addressing a youngster, I would say so. That is, European funds in our country over the last decades have been pouring in in abundance, perhaps more than any other European country in ratio. And that money was not exploited correctly. Therefore, both with regard to the direction and implementation, we should do things differently than what we used to do. I will be even a little bit provocative. Some of the previous European funds not, were not only uh, not well uh, absorbed, but actually were a factor, a factor that led to a distorted growth of the Greek economy. It uh, further enhanced the introvert character of the companies, which directed towards state money instead of being competitive at the global scale. And second, it has really soared ineffective parts of public administration. We can no longer do the same. So the second reflex that I get when I hear of RRF is beware, be cautious. The third thought is also positive, having to do with the European dimension. That is, RRF is a signal that Europe wants to move ahead towards a a more mutualization of uh, lending and debts. Certain, some signs like that were given during the Eurozone crisis, but they were ambivalent. I mean, there was uh, an ambivalent stance and there were opposite uh, directions taken. The great irony is that the greater contribution of RRF in Greek economy has already been done. We would not have had these low interest rates and a lot of private investments that have already pouring in unless we had this perspective of this direct funding of the country and the much needed uh, reforms through the RRF because the economy looks ahead and acts currently. That is even before disbursement of a single euro a large part of the benefit is already cashed in. The fourth and final thought coming in mind, and this is something that we've been saying for many, for a long time, but this is indeed now true. This is indeed the last chance. We have a last window of opportunity defined by RRF by the fact that uh, funding cost will be low for the next one and a half years, that there is a pool of uh, unemployment that will be gradually tapped in. There's an investment gap. There's a reform disposition. There's a policy of stability in the country. So everything is positive. But unless we lay the foundations correctly now, so as for this positive growth rates that are expected for 2022, 23, eventually 24 as well, not to drop where now we have the major problems, Greek economy, because then we will have problem of debt management and eventually also social problem. Therefore, one should make some difficult, perhaps, choices and put them in actual implementation today. So the fourth and last thought is that RRF is a major challenge. Thank you. Mr. Anastasopoulos, Mr. Vettas also said that we've had a lot of lessons drawn. Have we 
taken those lessons during this year so as to be ready today to view things slightly different and view this huge opportunity currently presented through the recovery fund. And I do not refer only to businessmen, but also but something that Mr. Vetas implied, that is the public sector, because a large part will be handled by the public sector, the public services that we'll have to perform. Yes, Mr. Vetas very positively said so, but also with his last proposal also hints the answer. We speak of a last chance. When one speaks of last chance, and raising issues as such is perhaps maintaining a small reservation whether we all received and learned the lessons. We were all receptors of the lessons, but have we all learned them? We don't know. I believe a lot of them, indeed, a lot of the lessons have been taken. And I say that because during those years of the 10-year crisis, we've been through such great straits that a large part of uh, businessmen, but also the political personnel and administrative public servants, that is, understood that we cannot go on with the old paradigm. This is what led us to that point. I believe that has been fully understood. This is the biggest lesson of all. Now, whether we've learned the way how to come out and move towards the new model that we have theoretically agreed upon, this rests to be seen. Nevertheless, I believe that for the first time, starting from the government itself, it seems that the lessons are taken. It's for the first time that we've got an excellent analysis where Greek economy stands. I speak of the Pisaridi study. A lot of agencies have contributed to that, and excellent work made by Mr. Vetas and Yove and the whole group of Professor Pisaridis. On this plan, we've had for the first time a strategic plan Uh, elaborated on recovery. Hellas 2.0, as it was submitted, it was one of the first European projects submitted. It was accepted by the European Commission, cum laude. It refers to the great extent to all aspects of Greek economy, great sufficiency and succinctly. So I believe this is a plan that can take us to the future. The point is, how is it to be implemented? We still we also have there, for the first time, the possibility to implement reforms, both because they're included in the program, but also because funding and monitoring from the European Commission is on the basis of the implementation of that plan of reforms. So for all these reasons, I believe that part of the lessons may perhaps not be fully assimilated, but the mechanism for the continuation is such that will also impose a large part of what has to be done. Now, Greek uh, entrepreneurship may perhaps still be living with the previous uh, dream that recovery will come by itself. This is not the case. And I believe all of us, through conferences and our associations and chambers, have a great duty to perform so as to bring uh, SMEs mostly, because big companies don't have to do, but we have a great um, obligation to inform all the others of what they should do and the way we can uh, implement and materialize all that program. One of the differentiating factors was the history of the loans. That is, in a program, we have the part of subsidies and of grants and also a part of loans. So to what extent has that been fully assimilated? You come from a research agency organization, but which is, however, very close to the market, to the business community. Have they fully realized that? And are, is the business world ready to address and face that challenge? Well, e- even if they are not, they must be. They will become. They can't do otherwise. The issue of loans, let's call it recovery fund, as we call it. But this is a a broad uh, uh, framework, uh, the next generation EU and various other branches. That money, which for the time being is on the table, are of two kinds. There are grants 
coming from the European Union to the member states. And there are also loans granted, again, from the European Union to the countries. I make the distinction because they could either become further uh, loans or grants. It's not one to one. Our country is one of the very few that also were granted a part of loans. The other countries said, I don't need it currently. I don't want to be further burdened, perhaps because they think that perhaps they can easily have access to capital markets. Most northern countries can do so. Now, the big part, Sheron, the biggest part of the funds that are to be flown in as grants will be then as loans excuse me will then subsequently be offered as loans to companies through the banking system of course the overall idea is that when companies will be paying back the greek state the greek state will be paying back the european Com commission and the european commission will be paying off uh, the capital markets this is the overall scheme now let me stress something here whatever one does in order to facilitate funding of companies which are can offer a good uh, perspective is important because in our country we still have <coughs> a gap, a spread, if you like, between the way we borrow, both in the public and private sector. So improving the lending times, this is positive. This can express the development of Greek economy from now on. These are companies which I might call medium size and medium potential as well. Companies which are not moribund, we want to keep them alive. That is, all they aspire to and uh, that wedge uh, of uh, survival. If they try, if they manage to survive and uh, are on the saddle, back on the saddle of international competitiveness can do very well. We do have such companies that start from small, from 30 persons becoming 300 or 500, or be related through contracts and agreements with other companies and so forth. For all those, funding is needed. And this is not easy to find it uh, in Greece because we don't have venture capital or so other forms of funding in Greece. Nevertheless, in our country, we did not suffer systematically of lack of funding, one might say. What we really suffered from is the lack of own equity and the development of a capital market. Therefore, in this sector, one should put the emphasis on how we will interconnect uh, the deposits, bank deposits in the country, which, which will be further created, so as to have systematic uh, interlinkage between Greek deposits and funding companies in a more systematic way, that is developing a domestic capital market, which is different from having uh, uh, loans. Your comment on the fact uh, that yes, there are there is this money lent, which, however, has to be paid back. It's not like in the past. This money has to be paid back to the state, so it's for the state to pay back the European Commission and so forth. Yes, yes, these are important elements. The one has to do that we must fully realize, because it hasn't been fully realized, I believe, that this is money that is lent, and they are not subsidies, they are not grants. Therefore, eventually, they will have to be paid back. And actually, <coughs> the way this disbursement will be affected from the banks to the companies must be on certain criteria, having to do with sustainability of companies and their business plans, because they must include also some uh, payment clause, I might say. Now, with regard to the first part, companies obviously prefer grants and subsidies from loans. This is obvious, but this is no longer valid. They should not only realize that these are loans that have to be paid back, but additionally, that 
uh, these loans uh, must mobilize other additional private uh, capital. And all this must be in the framework of sustainable investment plan. That is, it's not only that I lend money, but I also have, my, have to have my own money to invest. Unless we mobilize further capital, own capital, own equity, we will not have the expected uh, results from all that, uh, those inflows. But this, this must leverage additional mobilization. Now, let us welcome Mr. Thodoros Kilakakis. He is uh, on our screen. Mr. Adrian, Mr. you have the floor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? We're doing for, trying for the best. So we have Professor Vetas and Mr. Nasopoulos uh, joining the panel. We have been talking about the whole thing of uh, loans, of this leveraging that has to be uh, paid back when time is due. To what extent have we realized that great part of uh, the funds coming from the RRF have to be returned back once used? I think this is the largest uh, RRF plan uh, in Europe. It's a very important one because its starting point is the 0 0.3, 0.35% of interest rate, which is the lowest. This is uh, a plan that includes very accessible eligibilities and some really innovative terms. For instance, you can get 30% of your project plan. Uh, you can have 30% coverage of your marketing plan. So to, you have the, the uh, it's at your disposal how to, to use the money. It's a program that may be used on top of others. So you can apply. Uh, you, have, you may apply for a ref and at the same time get money from the development law uh, and as a result combine this interest rate with uh, certain tax exemptions. It is a program that will be very quick. It, by January 1st, everything will be almost ready so that approvals are granted and the loans are dispersed. We're talking about huge amounts of money, 12 billion euros of loans coming from the RF, which means we can leverage it to 30 billion euros worth of uh, investments. Let me ask the following. It's a point of criticism on behalf by, uh, by the opposition also. The opposition normally usually says that this amount, these funds will go to very few pockets. It's for few people, and very few people will get it. Can we have your feedback on that? It's a point of criticism that normally comes back again and again. I would say the, the funds are a lot, and uh, they're addressed to a lot of people. This money, this money is addressed to all those who want to invest. In order to give you the full picture, we have another 1.5 billion euros of grants exclusively for SMEs. And they don't require the same uh, uh, contribution of own assets and if you don't have this investing uh, profile. However, the big part of our economy, SMEs, micro companies, etc., is uh, a set of companies which uh, have uh, banking, uh, they're bankable, as we call it, in terms of their turnover. So being bankable, they may take part in those loans or they can become bankable because we're talking about healthy organizations and they didn't have, uh, they, they weren't supposed to be bankable because they weren't interested in getting loans because there were no tools available or instruments, financial instruments, or because taxation was too heavy for them. And that's why they were not uh, very willing to uh, disclose all their profits and uh, revenues. So we have an extensive effort on behalf of the government as well for those companies who were not bankable because they didn't have that profile to become uh, bankable and be eligible for loans. The uh, 
the sum of all that gives huge, uh, provides huge room for improvements, even investments. But there is one prerequisite: you have to be willing to invest. But because if you just want to get money out of the government's pocket, just in case, then this tool will not is not to be found within the RF. Do you think that there is investment appetite on behalf of uh, the market? Yes, huge appetite, the way I see it. But this is something to be seen. And But please take into account that Greece has a huge investment gap. Taxation is lower, lower uh, social contributions. A government which is uh, in favor of reforms. We have an abundance of financing and we have an increase of exports of more than increase of investments during the pandemic of no less than 10% compared to 2019. So I think we got what it takes. One last comment from Mr. Vetas and Mr. Anastasopoulos. Good afternoon, dear minister. Two quick comments because we're running out of time. Both relating to what you both on what you rightly uh, identified. A, we need investments, and this affects uh, the overall business environment and the speed needed for these uh, changes and reforms uh, to, uh, to be implemented. And the second point, which is not so that pleasant when talking politics, uh, yes, taxation and Tax coefficients have been reduced as a whole. You rightly said so, and you rightly did so. But our country has a huge uh, fiscal deficit. So an investor that comes to Greece, uh, it's an investor we would like him or her to come with, with a long-term horizon. We would like them to come and provide for at least 10 or more years uh, to, to business for, in, for 10 or more years. So they would like to see how this country will be after 10 years. So the questions are the following. How can we improve our fiscal status? How quickly can we have that given the reduced uh, tax coefficients addressed to the productive parts of our economy? That's one thing. In order to avoid thinking or, uh, or taking into consideration the eventuality of retaxing these uh, productive parts of our economy. And second, the reforms uh, underway. Do you think that they are able to, let's say, make the difference and attach and uh, attack the core of the problem of our economy, which means to change the DNA of this uh, society when it comes a, to public administration and uh, uh, administration of uh, justice? Uh, both comments are to the point. Let me start with the fiscal component of your question. Our budget has no large fixed expenditure in it. Its uh, structure is um, destined to create surpluses, which will be even bigger when the growth rate uh, increases. Uh, in Q3 of this year, we have a very good growth rate uh, beyond the one anticipated and budgeted. This uh, means that our deficit uh, grows smaller and our debt, of course, grows smaller as well. And it shows that there is that uh, the potential of uh, the Greek plan is quite robust. I'm talking about the fiscal plan. That's why. We believe that if the objectives, uh, especially after 23, are realistic, then we have an overall goal which may be met. The key, as I said before, is uh, a high growth rate that will um, help de-escalate the debt. As for the second part, this government will push forward reforms, and the RRF includes many reforms, quite demanding ones. Uh, that uh, also touch upon justice and other sectors of public administration. So this is what we have to keep on doing, and this is what we will keep on doing. And the key for these reforms is our economy's digital transition, because Greek public administration, to put it simply, won't change on its own. We have to have concurrently 
a strong penetration of digital tools. And what we've done so far is the tip of the iceberg of what will follow when talking about this digital transformation. Uh, it's a, a huge investment uh, in the pipeline, uh, talking about digital infrastructure affecting everything, justice, economy, etc. Uh, also, we uh, introduce a completely different set of incentives in our economy. Maybe you've seen the discussion we had before uh, about introducing uh, incentives for public administration services, for EFCA, for instance, the Social Security Fund uh, for uh, traders. Maybe you've seen the bonus scheme for civil servants or bonus schemes for members of, a com uh, of committees on fair competition. So we're talking about a set of reforms whose success will greatly define the overall success of uh, the RRF uh, plan, Mr. Nasopoulos. I think that one way or another, firstly, good afternoon, dear minister, one way or another, we all agreed on the following. Uh, the, the, the huge bet is how to leverage all these funds uh, to the benefit of uh, companies. That's the bet. That's the, the, the huge uh, wage, if you like. And this is my comment. 90 plus percent of companies are SMEs. A recent NBG report showed that these organizations lag behind significantly. They have a huge debt. They lack in product productivity, they lack human resources, and they have an issue with the mindset. And this is the major challenge for the entire uh, Greek RRF plan. How, plan. how can we help those companies to change their mindset, remain uh, uh, sustainable, and uh, tap into this opportunity? Uh, and how can we persuade them to invest their own money and, of course, use this leverage in order to survive in a very competitive uh, future? Uh, let me tell you the following. This is the truth, while at the same time it's also a myth, because for taxation reasons mainly, we have turned an organization to be synonymous with uh, uh, being a freelancer or a free trader. All these VAT IDs we have, more than one million VAT IDs, do not represent companies. A company is an entity we're talking about free traders, professionals, freelancers. They're great, but you cannot deal, treat them as if they are big companies ready to invest. Uh, for instance, a physiotherapist uh, or um, a family doctor uh, with his or her practice in a small neighborhood. Okay, op opportunities there are quite uh, limited. When talking about organizations that have uh, the investing potential that might affect our country's international competitiveness is something that may happen when the organization has at least one or at least one employee. So when you add the uh, employment, uh, the, the human, the, the workforce criterion, then you have no more than one fourth of these VAT IDs to be eligible. So not all these free traders or professionals are uh, open to invest. And out of this one-fourth of VAT uh, VAT IDs, uh, we expect the largest part of investments and the new jobs to come. A free trader has no, uh, doesn't include in his or her priorities to recruit people. Okay, he's a doctor, so he might need uh, a secretary or two. So they will have either to merge, to join forces, so that uh, they uh, work together or collaborate with larger schemes or entities. This scale up, which means to, to expand the average uh, size of a Greek company, is the key uh, for uh, fiscal policy, apart from promoting uh, incentives for investment. So that's why we have new investments for these people tax exemptions, tax reliefs, and incentives for mergers and, uh, and uh, joint ventures. So, dear minister, one asks you, give me two or three major reforms or major investment projects that the RRF plan uh, is pushing forward. What would this be? Please pick two or three, if you can. Uh, it's a hard exercise. It's as if one has to pick one or two of his children. 
Okay, pick the one, the best ones. No, I will pick some really characteristic ones. It is quite obvious that the public administration digitalization package is a huge one. We're talking about reforms and innovation. We're talking about 2.53 to 3 billion euros to be spent for uh, public administration's uh, uh, digitalization. It's of critical importance. Having said that, the green transition package, the e-mobility one, renewables licensing, licensing of offshore parks, energy storage, this package will change the energy uh, industry. Interconnection of islands with the grid. So we're talking about a web investments and uh, incentivization that will radicate a country's dependence to imported fossil fuels. Also, uh, promoting promotion of uh, first level uh, healthcare service and services and the uh, pro enhancement of uh, prognosis and diagnosis via online systems uh, which is something brand new another thing is the reform on uh, the reform on education from now on every graduate will have to be uh, every employee will have to be certified by a third party and based on this assessment he will have additional fees uh, digitalization of uh, justice the local urban planning uh, uh, plans across the country that will change completely our ability to propose uh, um, local centric or location centric investments so i gave you some all right <laughs> mr anastasopoulos Ah, apologies. A digitalization of our educational system. Uh, that's my next question. Dear Mr. Nasopoulos, let's take out of this equation the number of SMEs or you know, let's take out of the equation the parameter of size. Let's use the parameter of uh, integrating innovation because you are the head of the Council on Competitiveness. What would you say about that? Great. Yeah, I'm saying that because the last two uh, insights by Minister Sklakakis actually included the, uh, tapping into innovation, digital transition or green transition uh, include a very this robust component of uh, innovation. Yeah, that's a great uh, assist because it will help me close with a very important announcement that we're about to make. I think that in these two years of the pandemic, huge progress has been made. It's quite obvious. It's reflected, actually, uh, to the country's growth rate. And because of the fact that a country has been able to attract important uh, investment uh, Projects. So we do have the plan. Uh, so the progress of these uh, reforms is, I would say, secure, and the will of our uh, economy, of our uh, of the country, uh, to move on with these reforms is a uh, fact. So that's why our country has uh, attracted so much interest, and it has become uh, the, a good paradigm. So. Given that, and because of the fact that innovation represents a huge challenge when it comes to its implementation, even in, the, in this new context, that's why, in collaboration with Delphi Economic Forum and the uh, and our council, we will have the global conference of innovation, the global innovation of uh, uh, of uh, technology in. Uh, uh, in our country. We're talking about a huge event. The World Forum on Innovation hosts its, uh, its annual conference every year. So if we have the agreement next year, uh, we will reach an agreement, a final agreement, then we're going to have the new World Forum on Competitiveness and Innovation in Greece. That's an amazing thing. Uh, it will place Greece under the spotlight, uh, all stakeholders of innovation and competitiveness will be involved and I think to a great extent it will mobilize uh, big companies and also SMEs so that they 
can understand the importance of innovation for a sustainable uh, future. Professor Vetas, I have the last question for you on how we are proceeding with digitalizing education. There are certain programs uh, referring mainly to universities, co-funded postgraduate courses or uh, interfacing research and the, uh, the market, centers of excellence. Do you have a comment on that? All the things you mentioned before, uh, each one of these um, uh, issues um, um, allow for a huge discussion. So let's agree on the following. Education as a whole, the curriculum, uh, the um, uh, uh, vocational training courses, etc., they all represent a single unity. Our education lags behind. That's for certain. You can see that uh, in terms uh, in international ratings. But that's something that can easily change. It's up to the kind of uh, governance structures we apply, and it's up to the kind of incentives we provide. We do have the primary, the raw material we need. The, the students and the professors at a very high level. We know that. So as far as this is concerned, the things we can do in order to cover the gap uh, or to compensate for the deficiencies of the past. I don't know if everybody knows that. If we try to compare what we spent for the uh, first level and the second level uh, education, uh, I would say that I would say that greatest part of this expenditure has to do with the wages of the uh, teachers. I'm not saying that wages are high. I'm saying that we are spent very little for the digital infrastructure and other infrastructure of our schools. Uh, this creates an avalanche of uh, uh, of problems. Uh, the, th the, the whole issue is huge. Uh, let me comment. Uh, let, uh, uh, make, let me share with you two comments. The first one is uh, more specific. The second one is a bit more generic. So even in the 11th hour, we have to add the following to our discussion in order to accelerate. Our country is moving against the wave of demographics. You mentioned education. If you do the math. We know the number of children born in the last few years. The number of children, of students, of pupils, who will attend Greek schools will drop. It used to be 1.5 million people. It will drop to 1 million people within 12 to 15 years. So we will lose one third of our pupils. That's why we have to change our priorities, the size of classrooms, uh, the training of our uh, teachers. And it creates space in order to transfer resources to where we have uh, a, a lack, deficiency. We're talking about preschool training. It's also a matter of social injustice, because if we do that, then uh, low-income households will be given the opportunity to have their children integrated early enough. And it also facilitates women, women to be, uh, let's say, free and to have access to the labor market uh, under equal terms. You mentioned education and training. We have a country that, at least with respect to specific disciplines, engineering, ICT, or classical studies, archaeology, we could have, let's say, one-fourth, one-fifth of our postgraduate and uh, uh, undergraduate students coming from abroad. We could have had um, faculties operating as regional hubs. That could have, uh, that could uh, be a leverage, uh, uh, that could leverage our outcome. So if we are to enter a pathway of growth that will be both uh, strong and sustainable, these, are, these things will take certain efforts, and these efforts will have to be paid by many governments, not just one. It has to be systematic. Yes, our country has recovered quite swiftly uh, after the previous crisis, the previous recession. Of course, we do have the EU funds available, available, but these funds have been given in order to build a bridge, in order to exit the deep recession. They will not guarantee that our, our economy will be robust on its own. No, the plan has to be implemented. One last comment by the minister. So, in awareness, in awareness of the first, in um, grants, a slight problem with the sound. Apart from digitalizing our schools, our educational system, 
uh, elementary school, junior high school, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There is a huge project to interface research, academic research, of course, with businesses. This program Uh, this program will help digitalization move forward. Of course, I agree that education is a very, uh, is an overall strategic uh, concern of ours. It's a long-term one. Uh, government has already started working uh, uh, hard using specific reforms, introducing specific reforms. You know, when we talk about reforms, uh, reforms is like uh, cultivating a crop. It will take some time for the fruits to be ripe and ready to be collected, to be harvested. It's not easy for something to happen overnight. You cannot uh, harvest the, the fruits within one day. And of course, these reforms work uh, in aggregate. So you have to have the critical mass of reforms, and that's my final comment. It's important to have the necessary political underpinning and the, uh, the support of our society uh, to a wider set of reforms. And if something is to be said that's quite encouraging for the coming years is the fact that the society, and that's my opinion, despite some dissidents or disagreements, etc., it's quite more mature compared to five or ten years ago with respect to the point we're heading at and the way we evaluate issues uh, such as fiscal discipline, because fiscal discipline is the basis to have whatever uh, everything else we aspire to, and including reforms. And let us not forget, a reforms means to improve the effectiveness and the performance of a system. A society may leave populism uh, aside and become more efficient when it comes to its subsystems taxation, justice, etc., then this is the, the society that lays the foundation to prosper in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, stay safe. Uh, stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you.